Right, so welcome to Jumpstart workshop number 11. Uh, today we will be talking about LinkedIn and uh, conversations in LinkedIn. But the important thing about LinkedIn, as you know, is everything happens in LinkedIn if you are a business professional. So it's important for us to look into how strong is our profile and then we will look into how we can actually start to have the conversations with people because before you approach anybody, the first thing they do is just they will look at your profile. So that's the core topic for today. And where are we now? We are at the very end of the Jumpstart workshop series. As you can imagine, the workshop started um, early April and we are now, you know, every week we had two and now we are in week six, so LinkedIn conversations and brand building. That's our own personal brand building. And uh, we, we can also think about how your company brand building, but I don't think that's of big use now because it's individuals. How can you personally profile your branding? That's what we will touch Thursday. If you have missed any of the sessions, click, go to this link here, register for that. And once you register, you will automatically get login details. If you already have registered, you have the login details, reset your password and get inside Scribble and all these things will be waiting for you. The recordings, the, uh, the PDF document, the slide, the cheat sheet, so that you could start to implement it straight away. So from then on, we will be enhancing or we'll be going slightly more intense on the concept that we touched and also having wider concepts. The masterclass series begins from June and we will be looking again, nine different masterclasses. Each masterclasses are close to 90 minutes to two and a half hours, depending on the concepts that we'll touch at the very end. If you go through all the classes, you will be certified as a full stack bidder. That's the plan because you all are, some are bidding proposals, some are marketing, some are sales, but it's important to understand the overall contract life cycle. And that's the ethos behind Scribble. And there are, uh, you have to be a member of so many associations to get all these things, but we thought we will bring everything together for you and pull up as a one-off full-fledged masterclass series for the next three months. You know, we start in June, June, July, August. That's what we are going to do. Pretty much the summer is going to be masterclass series. So it starts with sales, then move into capture. Then we talk about mobilization, which is nothing but converting your bid into a real life project, your contract. Then we go back to sales pipeline and pre-sales management. You should have a pipeline to build up sales, to build up a contract. How are we going to do that? Then we'll go marketing. Foundations of marketing will touch more about what we touched early on in Jumpstart. Then rebid, which is a very different skill set compared to bid. Bid assumes that it's the first time you're doing it. Rebid means you're already running the contract, which means the way you approach that bid will be very unique to the way you approach your standalone new business. So it's important to go deeper on that. Then account management, which is like, okay, you know what, before you a bid comes to rebid, there are lots of organic growth opportunities inside your own contract because your new business converts into re-business, but in between you have this account. How can you manage the account and how can you kind of organically grow the account is what we'll touch there. Then we'll touch more into concepts of, you know, your end-to-end -end big governance and also leadership around bidding because I would expect every single one of you who are attending to grow and become a leader and for become a big leader all the way to become even much wider leadership position. So this is just a starting point for that. Then few more concepts. These will be dealt by specialists who will be will bring in storyboarding, how you can solutionize a bed, commercial and contracts, the key concepts of legal terms that you might need to be aware of while doing a bed. Then pricing, again, how to build a pricing model for your own contract. So these are kind of high level principles. We don't, we are not expecting you to be a full fledged lawyer or an accountant uh, or a subject matter expert. But I think having that concepts meant that you could get the best out of people around you because bidding after all, it's a teamwork and uh, you can't always do what you're supposed to do and expect things around you to work the same way. So that's where the masterclass series will be an elevation from where you are. So I would expect most of you to join me on that series and we can continue going on the journey forward. That's it. So LinkedIn, important LinkedIn. Why LinkedIn? I think I, when, when I started to put these principles together, people questioned me why bits and proposals why, how does LinkedIn come in? But end of the day, we are here as a professional, whatever the role that we have, LinkedIn is the only form. There are enough um, social media platforms that came in for, professional, uh, for professionals 
competing against LinkedIn, but every single thing went bust or it didn't really work or they didn't get enough people. So if you are in the industry as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, you have to use LinkedIn. So a few quick facts just to make you slightly more serious. So if you are in LinkedIn, if you're not on LinkedIn, you are missing 80% of your leads. Leads are the people who you want to work with. It could be your next boss or it could be your next client because that's it. So if you look, 94% of the business to business marketers use LinkedIn because when they are linking this, this could be like marketers or this could be recruiters. They all will be looking into what you post, why you post. And if you're not strong there, then you're missing the boat. So at an average, 50% of social media traffic coming to B2B sites is from LinkedIn. That's why you see lots of articles, lots of thought leadership, lots of posts even done by senior execs in this past three months in COVID crisis meant that the communications has been even more human or emotional rather than talking more about you know, their own uh, technical skills or their own uh, what we call uh, capacity or capability. So numbers wise, LinkedIn has close to 700 million users. If we look at the population of the world, I don't know, that number changes all the time, say four and a half billion pounds, four and a half billion people, sorry. One fourth of the people are roughly in LinkedIn. Um, uh, it's 200 countries, it's now actually 220. I haven't updated that. And there are at least three new members who join LinkedIn every second. So it's always going to grow. It's always good to be part of something that grows. So if you're not serious about LinkedIn, you have to be using LinkedIn effectively. So what that meant, this is the number. Yes, there are 700 million people and there are 300 million active users, but only 3 million share content. Out of that 3 million, which is roughly 1%, they are trying to engage and create this 9 billion odd impressions each week. So in every sector, there is an expert or if there is not an expert, there is a space for you to be an expert with your own following network. Even if you don't want to be an expert, at least post what you, what you believe in or if you find something interesting, start to share and become this one person in your industry. And uh, and gradually from that 1% become the 0.1% and become the top 20 influencer in your own sector. In my case, I specialize in three sectors, entrepreneurship, then I specialize in government outsourcing here in UK, then bids and proposals. In all three sectors, I am in top 20 in my own field. So that, that requires meant you need to be on top of things, but you need to leverage LinkedIn and you need to post what you believe in. So we will touch more about that in the next uh, session about brand building. But for now, ask yourself this question, am I using LinkedIn to my full potential? If you're not, the next 10 odd slides, we will be testing how we can improve it. And then I have a surprise at the very end about Thursday, which I also touch. So there is a big difference between being on LinkedIn and using LinkedIn. But you know, everybody, there are tons and tons of people, 700 million there, but only 3 million who post it. Some have opinions on everything. I'm not going to talk about those guys who tend to know everything about everything, but use it for the right purposes. Don't just use it just to host your resume. That's it. I've done my profile and I've done my uh, stuff, you know, high level, my education, bits, but that's it. Everything else is okay. You know, people know more about you through LinkedIn, give them more stories about you about LinkedIn. And if, if it's not just about resumes, it's about building trust among your peers. You know, your senior leadership might not know you exist in your company. You might be thinking that there are 100,000 people in my company, there are 10,000 people, or there are 100 people in my company. You know, it's important for you to be building the trust among your peers and also in your sector. You might be just working for yourself, but not many people know about you. So it's important to start to share about that. You know, as, as we touched in the sales, it's about know me, like me, trust me, and then buy me. So it's important for you to keep on adding that content. Then we talk about finding jobs and also hiring great people. Now, everybody, I'm expecting you to become bigger and better. So what that meant is, you know, rather than to rely on recruiters to find you the best people, 
keeping an eye on the market, keeping an eye on who's more proactive, it's going to, you are going to find much better talent than giving 15 to 20% of your annual cost to a recruiter who's just going to find it. Believe me, recruiters have their own purpose. Of course, they are going to do it. But if you take that extra effort, keep an eye on your own market, you, you'll also understand this influences in industry. Having influences in your industry helps you and your company much better advantage than getting someone who's not well known. No? So then there are many more reasons. I'm not going to dwell deeper on that. Let me quickly run through them. Generating leads. Again, if you are in a sales professional, kickstarting partnerships these days with COVID crisis, you would know you as a company, you as a person, it's you can only go so far. And it's, it's much more a collaborative economy. It's a collaborative world. It helps you to build the partnerships and it helps you to build the relationships. Building your brand, we already touched. Obtaining industry knowledge. So many people post great stuff. It's important for you to understand, go be part of that industry knowledge. Then customizing and creating content. You know what? You don't need to create content from scratch. This is what most people do and they give up you start with sharing what others have posted. You know, big news portals, they post even from Google feeds, Microsoft feeds, McKinsey's, you name it, your own industry bodies, your own company, they post it. You find interesting, start to share them. Let people come to you for new sources first. Okay, this person seems to share some clever stuff. Even though the stuff doesn't belong to you, sharing somebody's stuff still puts you as an expert. This is the gap most people miss start to share that there are lots of websites like scoop scoop kind of if you go it's free it, if you put your interest it tells you the hundred odd things that happens on a daily basis in your own sector collect it scoop it as it says share it get from there gradually you get support from your peers within industry and it helps you to network so it's important let's try to see linkedin in a very different angle but everything starts from your profile so your profile is what everything begins there. So what we are going to do here is today, I want to spend most of the time talking about your profile. So while you are listening to me or while you are listening to this recording, open your LinkedIn profile and view this in parallel so that I would expect you to improve from where you started today and come out and share these other stuff that I have done. So it looks better. Again, you are not going to move from 0% to 100% within one day or two days, but start to incrementally improve your own thing. Number one, I will show my profile. It's, it's, it's not a great, but at least I've done something. I'll share something that what I've done for all these steps at the very end. But for now, you open your LinkedIn profile or you open your LinkedIn app and open your profile and start to look at your profile, you know, reflect, use it. So number one, cover image. Cover image is just a banner behind your profile. It's not your cover photo, it's a cover image. What do you have there? And if you don't have there, at least get a quote that you believe in and add that quote. Just say, you know, life is about having control, you know, passion, anything that you believe in and have that banner behind, or if you're an entrepreneur, put your company's vision values behind it or anything that you believe adds value there, add it because it should be about, it should communicate about who you are as a person and it should also say what you stand for to a certain extent because it's important. You might underestimate it, it's important because pictures speak thousand words. So think if you have a cover image, if it's just your company logo, maybe change it and add something that that means something to people. So number two, you know, that's step one, cover image. I'll show. In my case, um, you will find a picture of my eldest son when he was young. And the reason for that is Bachu as a brand stands for little boy. Bachu stands for little boy. And, it's, and our values are being curious. Our values are build confidence seek purpose and make an impact. So curiosity is important for us. And who is more curious in the world other than children? So my banner behind is a baby. So uh, it's right or wrong is a question, but that's what I have. So I can put my own banner of my mascot, my company, 
but I haven't I put that picture. What do you believe in? Add it. And it also creates attention. Everybody loves children. So that's it. Number two, it's a profile photo. What picture do you have as a profile photo? It's better not to put a picture that is that that doesn't show. Um, always put a picture that has an action towards it so that you can attract people a little bit. Or even if you are putting a picture, you know, at least put a picture that you're smiling, you know, showing, showing, showing your teeth a little bit so that people get some character out of it. A uh, few quick things, you know, your picture should take up to 60% of the frame and, and there should be something slightly around it. It's not just you as a person, there should be slightly around it. Think about your profile photo and think about other profile photos. If you look at mine, I even changed my picture. You would see me smiling, sitting in my office desk and that's a long shot picture. So when you click that, you will see what it is. I'll show that it's live. Uh, some people would be having a speaker thing where they spoke there. Some people would have a good background where they're smiling. I don't know. Some people even have personal photos of the family, which I would avoid completely uh, because this is about you. So it is about you and whatever the format, try to make it slightly professional, you know, business casual to professional. Uh, rather than to make it very informal because I've seen pictures of people holding beers and stuff. You can clearly see it, once people perceive you differently, it's going to be very hard for you to bring it back. So I, I, I would recommend that. But look at your profile photo while you're listening to this or while you're watching it as you speak. So contact details. You should have uh, these things. We'll talk and then we will quickly look at the profile. You need to have a personalized your LinkedIn URL. This LinkedIn URL is if you go and search your name in Google, if most of the time your LinkedIn profile will be the first link that comes up. And you can clearly see what that link says. You could actually go and amend that link. So, uh, or if it, if, if it comes out as Basco Sundrams 89 or something, it's still okay. You know, there are enough Basco Sundrams in the world. So, you know, it could, I'm 89, it should be okay. But see whether that's, if it's complicated, see whether you could personalize that. Personalizing means, you know, if, if it comes up with some weird text and stuff, see whether you could change it. Your quick test is go to Google now and check your name and then see what LinkedIn tells us a link. It will be like www.linkedin forward slash Pascus slash Sundaram 89 or BA, something like that, you know? so. Look at their LinkedIn URL. It's important. Then in, in your contact details, there's on the side, this is where you're going to add your company details, bachi.com or uh, your own company details or your personal website. If you have anything, add that in and then add your professional email address. You know, Gmail, it's fine. But if you have a professional email ID, it's even better. And you start from there. In good old times, People can actually go to the LinkedIn connections, then they can click and they could download. And in part of the download, you can get the email IDs of people, phone numbers of people, all the contact details. But because the privacy settings now, it's all restricted. You cannot have those information. You can't have the downloaded unless you have a premium, premium version of LinkedIn. But even then, you cannot download it and access it. You can only do it individually. So what that meant is, it's important for you to put what's the right contact details. If you have Twitter, add the Twitter details there as well, because it's important. People can connect one to the other. And you might think this is wrong, but believe me, add your birthday. Because many of these stuff, if you can think you need to change, I have, this is your anniversary with the company. You know, if you add a company and if you add a date, it pops up in people's feed. Oh, Chinmaya is having fifth year anniversary with the X company and, uh, and other things. If you change roles, it automatically feeds it to people. But if you don't do anything, and if you are that 700 million minus 3 million people, the only thing that people will hear from you is the birthday. I lost my uncle three, three years ago. And um, uh, the only thing I heard, the uh, only thing I, it pops up from his feed is his birthday. He's emotional. But believe me, even if something goes wrong and even if you don't exist at some point, our birthday always will popping up in our friends and family's feeds. It's important to have that and please do have it because if it's, it's a good reminder that you exist 
and it's the only reminder that you exist if you don't do it. So that's one, contact details. So we touched, important, we touched cover image, we touched profile photo, and we touched contact details. So if you don't do six, seven, eight, nine, do top five, because 95% of the time, this is what people look to make an assumption. If you don't have a profile photo, please have a profile photo. And if you don't have the contact details, please add the contact details. The must, must thing, you should have a headline. The headline should not be proposal manager, bid manager, sales manager, etc. The, the, the headline, like a profile photo, needs to stand for something. Needs to stand for something. If you put proposal manager, yes, it's okay. Yes, it makes, yes, it, yes, it makes a point of what you do. But believe me, your role is, is, is just the job that you do. But you as a person is beyond your role. So this is where you can slightly go for and talk a little bit more. You know, you have 120 characters, so don't just put your job title. Award-winning bid and proposal leader, emerging bid proposal leader, best-selling author, entrepreneur, passionate about bids and proposals, internationally known to democratize bidding knowledge. These are some of the stuff that I use. If you look mine, I'll show It'll be like award-winning entrepreneur stroke government services big leader something like that, which means i would have touched keywords so that people can connect as i mentioned i'm bucketed into three different work streams as an entrepreneur tech entrepreneur um, then you have a consultancy which i run then i'm into government services which is my sector then i also have a learning platform which is scribble so bringing all these things together is one alignment and people do connect to me they need to get that in the headline which is tough but if you have one identity, which is great, just put that identity, you know, see what you can do. If you don't have, go and look what others have done. If others have used job profile, and if you haven't, great, you are becoming, you are improving from the 3 million and you're gradually becoming that unique person. So see what headline you could go for. So summary, the summary is pretty critical. If people kind of look two things, one day look at a photo, then they look at a headline, but then, okay, those two seems interesting. Then they click and the summary comes up. This is where you just need to write about everything. You just need to write in a narrative format and, and, to, and to say really about what you stand for. You know, yes, it's important to talk about, you talk about, I've studied here, I'm working here, this is my experience, etc. But believe me, you know what, anybody can say that the uniqueness of you as a person, write it there. This is my hobbies. This is what this is what I do, and and at work, this is what I've done. You know, you, you don't need to clearly say, you know, I've done thirty plus bids. I've done X, Y, Z, etc. But add it. Give your personality, not just work, but beyond work, sports, hobbies, interests, reading, anything and everything should come there because that's what makes people sticky. Oh, people will not just say, I've done thirty plus bids in five sectors or fifteen years or something. Beyond that, what do they know about you? What, what, how can you make it memorable? And at the very end, if you can, if you don't have con con contact details in there, maybe add your contact details here. So you're making it slightly tricky for people, but, but it's still there. And then part of, your, part of your summary, add some pictures. These pictures could be some of your certificates. These pictures should be, you know, some of your journey. Maybe your first day at work, your ID card, something to wherever you are, your awards, you know, whatever you think you might be useful to showcase if, if you're doing skydiving, if you're doing, you know, some interesting arts, some interesting paintings, I don't know, your hobbies, put it in there so that people, when they click, they get this personality around you. And that's very, very important because once that's ticked, everything else comes from there. So these are the top five things, the must, 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 must things. Then these are, you know, once we people click that, then they quickly move into the other parts. If you haven't done a few lines about current experience, past experience where you work, I need to raise my hand here. I haven't updated this myself, current and past experience, especially because you can't find Bacho Scribble there. I just looked at it like yesterday before this thing. I might need to do it. I'll raise my hands within 48 hours. When we sit down on Thursday, you will see that updated and I'll even show that live. So, what can you do there? Do you cover current and past experience? Again, write in a narrative format, add some photos and videos, you know, or images, you know, or in a browser, whatever you think, high level pointers, just add it there, even slides, you know, little bits, whatever you think. 
and add, but don't mix it up. Because if it's relevant experience, add it. If it's non-relevant experience, please don't add it. Uh, because there are one or two experience which I, which I was doing as a student, mid-level, uh, while I was doing that. There might be nice to add there, but I didn't add it. Because this is not a chronological order that people want to see from the time I've left university to the time now. I was super busy. I was doing all this stuff. They don't, they don't care, to be honest. What they want to know that is, is it relevant? The job that you're going to apply, this is where it gets interesting because you need to be comfortable with who you are and you need to be comfortable with how you want to portray yourself. And if your experience is not going to show that, then it's better you remove it because you can't change it, can we? Because you want, you can only position your future, but your past, you cannot. But that doesn't mean you need to hide or you need to do it, but add it, but add it in one single line. Maybe this is where you have done, you know? So that's it. So don't add every position you have ever had uh, what I mean by that is, if, if, if it's like, you know, I used to work in KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken when I was a student. Is it relevant? Uh, maybe. Uh, customer service, you know, I, that's my first job. I can do that. But being an entrepreneur to that, you know, it's going to be a tough gig. And again, I might need to see today now, after 18, 15 years in career, whether that experience is going to matter. No. I might share that during the interview process if it's relevant, but that's not really relevant now. So pick and choose what 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 the right thing for you, but ensure that ensure you're also honest that you don't want to lie and get caught. Education is important. Keep this up to date, link it to your college or university, and where possible, tap into your academic network. Because there are so many universities have a very good alumni network, and most of your alumni network are into different fields. So you might think that your network is only whom you created career, but that's not most of the relationship that I am receiving recently is because of academic networks. And most people are very emotional about academic networks, including me. You know, I, I'm, I did my bachelor's in South India from Amrita University and my master's was in Imperial here. The moment I see anybody having degrees from those two, straight away, you know what, I'm, straight away I'm slightly biased. I, I, I want to help them. So, and that's part of alumni network. Look into your alumni network. Look into see who's doing what and, uh, and see how you can go from there. But that's important to start from education. Any professional certification. These days, I'm hearing more and more people doing online degrees, uh, making the best use of their, uh, their time for a lot of time. You know, use Moodle, you know, get some degrees, free degrees, add it there. If it helps, it helps. But add most of the certificates there. It's important. So these three are critical. To a certain extent, because you remember, courage is not just about sharing, it's also about giving and also receiving. It's about receiving and giving, you know, courage is both ways. It'll be interesting to just see, you know, in um, when you log into uh, LinkedIn, sometimes you will see, you know, people, it pops up, you know, in those X and those Y. And, and the moment you see that person, you can clearly see, okay, I, I know this person as X, let me do it. If you look at my profile, you know, gradually when I go through, I started as an analyst filling numbers. So people have endorsed me for commercials. Then I became a bid manager, proposal manager, got that. Then I became a sales director, bid director, went up. So gradually now I'm an entrepreneur, now I run my own company, blah, blah, blah. So it's all this, which means endorsements vary. But think, where have you been endorsed? It's clearly C. And can you control your top three? No, you can actually. So look into and see where you want to be endorsed and then ask people and then ask people, give endorsements for skills and you shall receive. That's an important word. The more, funnily enough, the word LinkedIn is structured is the more you endorse, the more you, the more your feed pops up to others to endorse. So you don't want to endorse for the wrong reason, for the wrong people, but please do take your time to endorse right people. So next one. Um, uh, recommendations, you know what, where are, I don't do that. I give recommendations, then ask for recommendations, but it's something if you, if you want to do, it's important to do that. That's why it's tip number nine at the very bottom, uh, at the order of priority. But if you want to do that, aim at least for three from employees and three from peers. So at least have reasonable thing. If you want to stay in the career that you want to be, it's important for you to get endorsements from your peers, uh, you know, so that there's something there and also from your leaders as well where possible to get it. And so that's it. So see whether you have recommendations. If you're not, use this as a push to get those recommendations, to get those endorsements and stuff. 
So this, funnily enough, the first seven is you is your homework. You need to change your profile. Whereas these three is you are asking somebody else to help you. you know, ask for help. You know, people will definitely help. The last one. You will clearly see every every single person follows certain people for some reason. Again, I'm not a big fan of those things. You know, you don't want to follow Elon Musk or anybody unless you know Elon Musk, unless you really care about what Elon Musk is saying, unless you're going to follow what Elon Musk is going to say. But there's no point, you know, following all those guys and then not doing what they're saying or not believing in what they're saying. So pick up what industry group you want to be part of, which is very important, especially industry group that you are working for or you want to work with. And the next one is you also follow pages that truly trust you, you know, that you can truly trust and you can also start to add values. So you can start to become add post in those groups. These days, you know, funnily enough, you, you won't get any links from those groups because if you post something, if somebody responded to it, not necessarily you get response to that because groups are, Groups are not that active in LinkedIn as popular as in Facebook, but it is what it is. So these are some of the top 10. So let me quickly show you. Um, so this is what we will be covering next. But before we do that, let me stop the share and I will show you my profile pretty quickly. Step one, the banner in the background, you know, you can, you can put your company logo, you can do something, but you know what? Um, I thought our logo is is, uh, is is little boy, so why not? My my eldest is now nine years old, but he's no more little. But that picture means a lot to me, so I just thought I'll add it, part of it. So uh, people who know me, as you can clearly see, I have a mascot just over here I'm pointing. Um, it is, uh, it's similar. So we'll uh, quickly go to the profile again. So what that meant is, your step one is there, Step two, something like that, you know, reasonably relaxed, um, smiling, something like that. Or if you want to action, do some action, talking, sitting in a meeting, anything like that, but make it slightly actionable if it's possible. Then your headline, make something interesting, you know, what industry you want to go for. Okay, I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, I'm a leader and I work in this sector. Oh, funnily enough, I'm, I also have APMP because um, we have Scribble. So, uh, and again, award winning. So what that meant is in this 20, 120 characters, how much can you write about yourself? It's there. Contact info. That's the one we, we talked about. Again, your, this is the, your profile. This is the link that people will find your websites, their address, your picture, and it automatically connects and the birthday. It's important so that you fill those details. If you haven't, fill those details. Then you gradually grow. And this is important. Step five is your about your summary you know it's very long but it touches everything here we go i am an inclusive entrepreneur you know what i prefer balance to profit and some of the thought leadership that i do and then some of the professional development stuff i do some of the books that i wrote some of the speaker stuff that i do some of the giving and my education and my awards bits and pieces some of my health relationships and what i do where i do so you know what so you kind of give them an overall feel for Okay, it's not just about I've done 100 plus bits and this is what I've done, etc. It just gives them a flavor for a different types of things. You as a person have a lot of uniqueness and try to add those uniqueness in. And as you can clearly see, these are some of the images. You can clearly some brochures and uh, everything about some of our toolkit. What is it? So people who come in, okay, you know what, whatever he's talking about the industry, I think it makes sense. You can really see I haven't added many more, but it's enough. It just, it just helps give them something and you just go from there. Then, you know, before you go, you can also clearly see, you know, in posts and articles and stuff, you know, who have you endorsed, who have you done? You can clearly see that. And this is some of the experience as, in, as I told you, I haven't done this done. Uh, I need to improve this myself, but at least it tells you chronologically, I've, I've run a company and my experience and my education, my degrees, all these things come up, add it, do what it takes and skills and endorsement, clearly outsourcing, I've been endorsed more, strategy, I've been endorsed more and then program management. It's uh, in, in, as I mentioned, this used to be pretty popular in like four or five years ago, uh, but not the case um, anymore, but it's important to have some endorsements there and other sectoral knowledges. Go and look at your profile, what you have done and other things. And you know what? Um, there's one person who gave me when I was working 
and then the other stuff that I gave it to others and accomplishments have those things if possible and then write it so this is your LinkedIn profile so when people actually look the very basic the top five must is have a picture of the background don't leave it empty have a profile photo fill up your contact details have a good headline and most importantly have a good summary those are the top five and uh, please do those top five and uh, before before next time we meet so i'll stop the sharing there and then we will go back to our slides again so what we'll cover now now we have built up a profile right the next is about extending that so as i mentioned before we close, I just want to lay this point. You have nothing to lose to laying a claim that I am working towards being the best in what I do. Believe me, it tells something to people. You put outside. Sometimes if you follow me, I'll just share everything and anything. You know, what it meant is you are working towards something. You're standing for something. People love that. People respect that. And you know what? You are getting to be a leader and authority in your field. It's important. Why you go and say, you know what, I'm working towards it. You know, I, I'm on a journey. I am, I am a prospective author. I'm going to write a book in the next year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get myself certified. I'm going to do this. You know, it's important. I'm one of the best in the world. It's not arrogant. It's self-belief. And the people need self-belief. And in my case, I am motivated by saying outside to people and then I get it done. So people believe in me. Okay, you know what, I'm going to do this stories i'm going to do 10 stories for mental health awareness this month this week alone by friday you know I, I i would not have done it if if i write it in my book but i've shared it to people and people have liked it loved it responded to it now i'm going to do it so it's important so this is what we'll cover in uh, thursday it's personal brand building but we'll also touch how, how can you send connections request how can you also share a little bit more about having conversations to people but the most important thing that will happen here is there will be a live LinkedIn profile roasting from me. So you have listened to me and uh, please do join in because this is going to be for your benefit. And uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to critique, but to your benefit. As, as I raised my hand, mine is not perfect myself. But if you can improve from where you started to where you want to be, that's a journey. And I just want you to be part of this journey. That's all. So if you allow me personally, um, then we will open up your profile and then we will have a review and then we'll say, okay, it's top five, step five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is done. Eight, nine, 10, you know, you can't get everything done, but at least let's do one, two, three, four, five until the summary part. Let's complete that. And then we will continue more on personal brand building, et cetera. For the first 30 minutes or so, we will look at the profile, depending on the number of people, very quickly, five to six minutes per person, or slightly longer depending on the people and then we'll jump into this so it's important and let's get that done so that's what i thought i'll share this part of this and uh, anymore i will cover more in the next last jumpstart workshop webinar 